Hello everybody and welcome back to my Let's Play. Now, as uh, a few of you might be aware, um, this is not the original recording for this video, as for some bizarre reason, uh, it decided to only record the video. And uh, yeah, I lost half an hour of me talking at you all. So instead, I'm going to uh, do a bit of a chat, um, talk a little bit about uh, the future of the Let's Play, um, what I, where I intend to go from here, and um, whenever anything interesting happens, then I'll mention it and I'll do a bit of a, uh, kind of a documentary, so to speak. So, first and foremost, um, this play, uh, as I mentioned before, this Let's Play will continue. Um, I will... I do intend to eventually do uh, Let's Plays for other games that interest me, um, particularly some of the more, mm, let's say, less known games. Um, Xenonauts is one that I've been particularly interested in. I've uh, gotten back into it after uh, about six months or so of um, it sitting in my Steam library doing Clicking Dust. Um, I've also got a whole bunch of other games that very few people actually play, and I don't, I don't think there's been any Let's Plays of it for a very long time. Um, none that I'm familiar with, at least, and they'll be famous who's done it, that's for sure. Um, I might, at some point, put up a list of all my games um, in the library, if, and I don't know, put it to a poll or something, so anybody who's interested in seeing Let's Plays of some of those, you know, you're welcome to ask, and um, I'll see about running one of them, um, but um, assuming that doesn't happen, and assuming I don't ask, then at the very least, um, I have two Let's Plays in mind. Um, obviously, as I said, this one will continue uh, for a while longer. Um, specifically, I want to at least colonization down, and I want to kick around some NPRs and maybe some precursors. Uh, probably get to a full-blown war and see how that pans out. Um, secondly, um, I believe I mentioned it a, a few episodes ago, there is a particular uh, scenario that somebody raised that um, it sounds very, very interesting. Um, I don't want to mention it just yet, but it's, uh, it's certainly a different start definitely different from what anybody else has done, that's for sure. So, something something I'm thinking of doing um, once I've covered all the basics and... Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's certainly something that I'm interested in doing. The, other, the second one, of course, is that I'm definitely going to do a Xenonauts um, playthrough. Um, for those of you that don't know, Xenonauts is the spiritual successor of the original XCOM series. Um, it was in development for quite a while and it was released a few months after uh, the latest XCOM, the the recent re-release of XCOM, not XCOM 2. Um, the latest XCOM came out. Um, a lot of people who were big fans of the original XCOM series um, found it to be a bit of a disappointment as it did deviate quite a bit from the original formula. Um, I know I, for one, found it really hard to get into the whole two turns, uh, two action unit things that the latest series did. Um, and you know, it had a lot of niggling issues. The geoscape and the way they did the... Um, the... Uh, the actions that the aliens did, and then the three terror missions at once, that was a big thing that I know pissed off me, that's for sure. Um, so, a lot, a lot of the things that they did um, really went against the original um, XCOM. So, uh, the guy, so obviously, you know, they couldn't get the XCOM license because, you know, XCOM had it. So, they made Xenonauts, and Xenonauts is... A very faithful, at least in my opinion, recreation of the original XCOM. Um, so I'm definitely going to do an XCOM one. That's for sure. 
Um, and then after that, well, we'll see. So, uh, so let's see what's happening. So we're, I think we're just about to finish off the last of our naval complexes. And there they go. Um, so at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm expanding up the naval dry docks up to 16 kilotons, um, which is the target, or um, which is the target tonnage for our warships. Um, obviously, once they get up to up to uh, rank, they'll be tooled to the warships. But um, at the moment, um, as they are, um, I'm also um, expanding up the civilian, um, the, sorry, the commercial shipyards up to 100,000 tons. Um, so, yeah, you'll see that go through. Um, very little actually gets done, to be honest, during this Let's Play, which is why I, f I wasn't too upset that uh, I lost the audio for it. Um, got a few techs. Um, I think I designed uh, a tug. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about tug design once I actually get up to it. Um, and apart from that, um, we just basically worked towards construction of the terraforming orbital. Um, just fiddling around a little bit. I, I, we think we got a few extra uh, civilian mining um, colonies. Um, I think about three of them popped up. Uh, yeah, one just popped up now, um, and um, yeah, mo most of them were resources that we just didn't really didn't care about, so um, they got to keep it. Um, so yeah, uh, what else? What else? Um, oh, one thing that didn't happen between me actually recording this video and me re-recording the audio is that. Um, I actually hit 100 subscribers, so woo! Thank you, everybody who has actually subscribed. Um, I don't really ask people to subscribe at the end of my videos because I find it um, a little bit obnoxious when people ask, you know, uh, please hit the subscribe button down below. It's like, eh, yes, we know all that, we know all that. Anybody who uses YouTube knows all that, so yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do want to thank the people who have subscribed. Um, and as well as all of the uh, words of praise for my Let's Play that I have heard from people, um, not just in the comments section, but in chat and on Reddit as well. So, big thank you to everybody there. Um, you know, the support that you get when you're starting out on a project that is, to be honest, quite scary to do, considering I've never actually done anything even remote resembling all this. So... Yeah, um, yeah. Just want to say big thanks to everybody involved. Um, obviously, big thanks to Steve as well. You know, without him, none of this would have been possible because you know the game wouldn't exist. Um, yeah. So just wanted to uh, to say that. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What are we doing at the moment? Yeah, so um, I decided to start work on missile technology. Um, here at the moment, I'm talking. I was I was talking about um, the optimal um, early stage uh, warhead being the five times multiplier, um, as the four times requires a 0.25 warhead for an AMM, whereas the five times requires a um, 0.2. Warhead, which gives you a nice 0.2 um, for warhead, 0.2 for maneuver, and oh, or 0.24 agility, and then that leaves about 0.6 MSP for engine. Um, and once you get the multiplier up high, which is another thing that I've started working on, um, you can get a pretty decent AMM, and that ratio is fairly consistent across the board for a good quality AMM. So you get 0.2 of a warhead or whatever you need. 0.2 um, agility is usually sufficient. And then just pack the rest with engines and you get ridiculously good missiles out of that. Um, especially when your engines are maximum possible um, or maximum that you've got um, engine multiplier. Um, the five times uh, multiplier as well is also good for 
um, ship killers as well, because with five times you can get um, that nine damage missile for about 1.8 um, MSP with, uh, with a warhead. So with four, uh, with a multiplier of four, um, you need over two MSP worth of warhead to get nine damage. Um, nine being the next square after uh, four, um, allowing three uh, layers, layers of penetration. So when you can get under two MSP worth of warhead, that leaves you more room for fuel, more room for agility, and more room for engine. Um, six obviously is better, but once you reach that point, uh, but as, as you know, it's five MSP um, five warhead per MSP um, is 8,000 points of research, whereas I believe six of MSP is uh, either 12, 14, or 16,000. So at that stage, it's, it really stops being viable for. Um, it really stops being viable for early tech, and you just have to sink so much um, research points into it that. At that stage, you're pretty much hitting, you know, almost starting to get almost mid tech. So, um, five thousand is what I find the optimal point where you can really start getting good quality missiles early on. Um, you can do it with four. Uh, it's certainly possible, but the, that five is only eight thousand points, and at that stage, you should, the eight thousand points should not be too long. Probably six to nine months tops. So, um, that will get you um, good quality missiles. Um, here I'm just going to go and assign the um, uh, 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 some mining governors for the colonies that we've got. Um, now, uh, obviously, I'm assigning the best miner for our private colony of uh, UX25. Um, well, I think that one actually had one already, um, but. Um, with civilian with civilian mines, right? You pay for the mine. Right? You pay per mine. So when you're buying minerals from that mine, um, you want it to mine as much as possible. So the higher the output, the better, right? Um, because you end up getting the minerals faster, which means you pay end up paying less. Whereas when they are taking it to uh, when, when they're taking it, when they're, when they're selling it to the civilian sector, then obviously mining doesn't matter so much because the longer they do it, the more money they make, and well, it just you know, makes everything smoother. You get the tax, you get the taxes, so that's great. More money for you. So maximum mining for um, for your for your the ones you're buying, and. The less mining, the better for the ones you're not. Um, you can always use them to train your um, to train your governors, but you know if you want to train your governors, you can always just stick them on a colony that you're terraforming or whatever, and that way you're not um, you don't end up losing any wealth. And in fact, you probably end up gaining wealth because you'll be training them in wealth training for those colonies or whatever. At the very least, you're not losing wealth in the long run. Um, so yeah, at this point, I'm, um, uh, I think I'm reiterating at this stage about um, doing slipway upgrades in, sm in batches of smaller amounts um, because that way you get... Uh, you benefit from uh, effectively compound interest calculations compared to just buying a, a single batch because that way you just get it faster overall. Um, I think I covered the same topic in episode in episode four or five. Um, can't remember off the top off the top of my head at the moment, but um, yeah, I'll just cover it again. So yeah. Uh, Compound interest is very powerful, and if you build it in small batches, then you get to benefit from that compound interest. Um, the reason why I use small batches of tonnage instead of using continuous capacity is because continuous expansion can very easily get out of hand, um, and then you end up with multi-million ton shipyards and no 
neutronium and then you run into trouble. So, um, yeah, like, like I said, I covered it in more detail in one of the earlier episodes, uh, and if you've watched all, through them all, then um, you probably know about it. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, that pretty much covers everything I actually you know, had to say about the channel and all that. So at this stage, I'm just going to sit back, see if anything crops up that we need to cover. I think I'm designing the tug at the moment. What the tug? No, that's a salvager. Um, so salvage, with salvage modules, um, each module salvages a certain amount of tonnage uh, per day. And obviously... Uh, when you have um, when you have better salvaging modules, you get more. Um, a salvager needs cargo. Um, it doesn't. The cargo doesn't have to be on the salvager itself, but the task group that the salvager is in needs to have cargo capacity because the salvager would dump all of the minerals and components that it picks up. Um, into the cargo bay of the task force. Uh, so you need to make sure that you do have sufficient cargo to um, salvage whatever you're working on. Um, um, obviously, we're going to be using it to salvage the wrecks of our ships that were destroyed by the invaders um, that are currently sitting in orbit around Earth. And... Um, yeah, um, I don't. I think I, I get it under production, and I do get it built after this episode. So you'll you'll see it's in action in the next one, um, but not in this one. So yeah, All right, So Collins is on the way. And just me talking about the salvage drops. Um, obviously, uh, conscript crews and void deployment time is not really a big deal because the um, I'm fairly confident. Well, it's a commercial vessel, so it doesn't really matter with deployment, but. Um, yeah, it, it does lose, it, it doesn't really impact the salvage capacity, so you can salvage away as much as fast as you want, or as slow as you want, without having to worry about morale or efficiency or anything like that. Um, yeah.
so nothing too interesting happening just yet. Um, start of construction on the on the uh, Perry, which is our uh, terraformer. It's actually underway. I do end up fiddling with the production uh, rates um, for the Perry, uh, and I eventually after the episode I do actually manage to ramp it up. Um, I actually get it up to like ninety percent production because it's just taking too long. Get it pumped out and get it out, out and done. Um, but uh, yeah, so at the beginning of the net, so at the end of this episode. Um, and at the beginning of the next one, um, oh yeah, um, I got second time of the uh, Nordic names uh, for all the shipyards. So uh, apologies, apologies to any of the Swedish people out there uh, who might be watching this, but I, I just can't pronounce any of those shipyard names, so I had to change it. Um, I really do love you guys, you guys are fantastic, and it's a fantastic culture, and quite frankly, if I could live there instead of here, I would be, um, but yeah, I just can't pronounce any of your names without really, really trying, so I just had to change, that, change those. <clears throat> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so at the beginning of the next episode... Um, we got all those ships built, we got the orbital hab built, we got a tug, we got all the stuff we need, um, and um, yeah, we're pretty much ready to go with colonization, terraforming, and all of those great things. Um, so I don't think I've actually talked about Missile Tech um, at any point in the earlier videos. Um, so obviously, um, Warhead per MSP, Agility per MSP, all of those are obvious. Um, the, better the, the better the technology, the more of those you get um, without having to invest as much space in the, in the missile. Um, magazine ejecting chance, um, when a magazine is destroyed, um, when a magazine is destroyed, the magazine ejection chance is the chance that the magazine will eject any ordnance that happens to be inside it. Um, if it succeeds, then the magazine is destroyed and the ammunition is lost. If it fails, then the ammunition detonates inside the ship and then you get those lovely secondary magazine explosions that you really enjoy seeing on enemy ships, not so much on yours. Secondary magazine uh, detonations, of course, um, just add an extra stack of damage to your ship, which may then rupture further magazines, and then you get chain reactions that tear the ship apart. So, um, obviously, the higher the chance to eject, the better. Um, magazine feed efficiency percentage is essentially how much of the magazine's um, space is dedicated to the systems that allow launchers to pull um, ordnance from the magazine and into themselves and also um, essentially allow the magazine to load and pull and move um, missiles around within um, itself. So the higher the efficiency, the smaller the feed system can be. Um, here is, uh, here's the building of the tug. Um, I'll, I'll just jump to that in a sec. So you can only have one tractor beam per ship. Multiples are pointless and uh, yeah, it won't let you because you know you can still build without errors, but there's no point having multiple tractor beams. Um, each ship can only tra with a tractor beam can only tractor one ship at a time. Um, and I believe one ship can only be tractored by another ship, uh, by one other ship at a time. So you can't um, connect two tugs to a single um, target ship. But I believe it is possible to 
um, to basically daisy chain tugs. I haven't tested it myself, um, at least not for a very long time, so it might be possible. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to actually do the test to see if it is actually possible. Um, one thing to note with tugs is that um, with a normal ship, as you add more engines, eventually your engine power is just basically spent on pushing engines around. With a tug, this is not as big of a deal because you essentially need as much engine power as possible. And the reason for that is because um, to get the speed, right, you divide the total tonnage by the engine power, right? And when you're dividing a small amount of mass, like a ship with a bunch of engines, by a large amount of engine power, adding more engine power for um, a similar amount of mass really doesn't get you anywhere. But when you strap it to, say, a million tons of orbital habitat, like our terraformers are, um, the difference between dividing a million by 5,000 and 6,000 can be pretty significant. So that few extra engine power will make a huge difference when it comes to linking with a million ton orbital habitat. So that's why tugs, so when it comes to the rule of don't have too much engines, tugs are the exception because they're not engines for themselves, they are engines for themselves and also whatever they're pulling around. Um, obviously there are limits like you know having a hundred engines compared to 50 engines is probably a little bit overkill but um yeah you you, you will lose efficiency eventually just like you would with um loading up say the orbital habitat with its own engines and that is definitely a possibility um but Sometimes it's just easier to have the tug because the, that because if you strap engines to an orbital habitat, then yeah, the hab will be able to move under its own power, but then it has to carry its own fuel. Um, and while the hab is potentially spending years in orbit around a planet, those engines are doing absolutely nothing. Whereas with the tug, you can use it to ship multiple habitats around or move other ships around, um, rescue ops, stuff like that. Um, and it can also be sometimes beneficial to have... Um, to have a tractor beam on a tug as well, no, no, not, not a tractor beam, uh, a jump drive. Um, can be, not necessarily, because um, generally speaking, if you're going to be using a tug for something, it's probably going to have a jump gate, because a tug is going to be pulling things that are bigger than it is, so yeah, it it's, makes things a lot easier if you have jump gates before you're pulling anything through to uh, different systems. Um, yeah, a few of them. So we've got a few of the ships up and running. Um, you'll notice that even though I've got uh, Buellner Navy Yard, which actually gets renamed uh, because it's not a Navy Yard, even though I've got it tooled, I'm still adding capacity just because I'm getting all them all up to 100,000 tons uh, capacity for, this, for the commercial ones. Um, that way they're all even. I don't have to worry about which one can tool what ship and... Um, that way they've all got the same construction rate and stuff like that, so it just makes things a lot easier. Um, right, so missile. Uh, what, what else is there for missile? Um, reduced launcher size, of course, um, is fairly obvious. Now, I find that the uh, 70 or 75 percent reduction, so the first stage reduction, is probably what everybody should be running at, because the double reload time for the first stage of reduction is essentially almost insignificant um, when it comes to missiles because your size one launchers are usually going to be firing at five to ten seconds right it's going to be five maybe ten seconds um very very short if you double that you go up to 10 to 20 right so um yeah so with um Yeah, so with the launcher, like if for an AMM, right, um, five, uh, the, the difference between 5 seconds and 10 seconds is usually not going to be um, 
it's not going to break your back. But the difference between, say, 10 launchers and 12, and, and 12 to 14 launchers can. And those extra launchers can easily make up for um, an extra 5 seconds reload rate. Um, and I think we're actually coming up at the end of the episode, so... Yeah, um, and f even for anti-ship launchers, it's not really a significant penalty. Uh, although, I suppose it depends on how you play. So, that's the end. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.